Last year, just before winter set in, a big bulky jumping spider showed up in our living room. Same kind as this picture of another one from the year before. It's a uh, Phytopus carneus, I think. I love these spiders, and I don't like the idea of loosing them out into the below freezing temperatures, so I housed this one in a small vivarium and fed it crickets while it gradually built up a dense hammock in a top corner of the enclosure. I wondered if there might just be an egg sack in there as big as that spider was. And a few weeks later, first week of January, I had to do a double take because it looked like the enclosure was swarming with fungus gnats. But I checked closer and it turned out to be a freshly emerged crowd of roaming spiderlings. So with this new responsibility on my plate, I found a limited supply of flightless fruit flies at a local pet store and then also ordered a larger quantity from Josh's frogs. Special techniques were needed to open containers and mingle the occupants, but it worked fine as long as it was done outside and the fruit flies were refrigerated and calmed down first. Their first attempts at grabbing prey weren't always successful, but gradually the crew started to figure it out. Bilbo and Thorin and company did not walk away from this one. Maybe Shelob's direct oversight tipped the scales. Rough count, it looked like the hatch started off with around 80 slings, and then over the next two to three weeks, those that survived, which was about 50, I think, had molted one or two times and were starting to get markings on their abdomens. And they were also starting to get large enough that cannibalism was going to be an issue. So picked up some plastic 5.5 ounce containers, poked pinholes around the rim that's opposite the lid, and made a tedious transfer of the 43 surviving spiders to their solo enclosures. I left a few behind um, in the original enclosure since they were cocooned up and, and molting. Setting into a caretaking routine has been a learning experience. With the spiders solo in their enclosures, they are wily but at least manageable. The fruit flies, on the other hand, Wow, they are relentless, swarming like minions. They recover from refrigeration really fast and then swarm up the walls of their containers like an accelerating plague. So here's the setup. The original birthing container, where it started, the pending enclosures are here, and the completed ones here. The Josh's Frog's fruit fly container is back here, and then there's this more manageable container with a batch of fruit flies deposited into it. It's wrapped up by a cold pack so that I can quickly and repeatedly chill them back down. Then, this workspace right here, this casserole dish or whatever you want to call it, it holds four spider enclosures at a time, which seems to work out just about right for managing foursomes of spiders and then the warming and swarming fruit flies. And back over here is a squeezable wash bottle filled with filtered reverse osmosis water. Part one of this process is turning each enclosure over, trying to get the spider to retreat to the other side, getting the lid off, and then dropping the dried out paper towel ball off of that lid. Then using a dry cotton swab to twirl out the fruit fly husks. This works pretty well since there are bits of webbing in each container and those help to snag up and hold the carcasses to it. Like after a few containers that swab turns into this hideous cotton candy Shrek snack. After four containers are swabbed out and the lids loosely in place, it's watering time. And sometimes wall climbing needs to be discouraged. So then we load up that paper towel ball with water and move on to the next one. Next up is the fruit fly shuffle. Serious, mindful coordination is required. 
So tap to consolidate from the main container. And then tippy tap to deposit three to five flies in each enclosure. Then snap that enclosure lid in place before those inexorable flies begin to ascend that short distance out. Then repeat the process for the remaining enclosures. By the fourth spider, that main fly container over there gets pretty active. It cannot be overlooked for more than a couple seconds, lest the unrelenting masses irretrievably surge forth. Once that batch is sealed up, comes the careful inversions of the containers. So get that ball of soaked up water to fall somewhere other than on the spider. A couple close calls here and there, but it helps keep them wily, I figure. It's interesting to see them go into action when the fruit flies drop in. Some of them are on their prey before I can even grab their lid to snap it on. Others take a little time to kick into gear. And those tiny, nearly invisible hammocks seem to play a role sometimes. I know it's not for everyone, but I'm smitten by these little critters. Especially magnified where you can see those iridescent quills and huge imperial probe droid eyes that don't miss a thing. And here they sit, in repose waiting for the next water and fruit fly interlude cycle. <laughs>